you're going to go over personal financial literacy. When we are talking about checking accounts, comparing checking accounts are some important information that you need to know. Checking accounts usually have a fee that is a percentage of an account or a flat rate. Sometimes an account can require a minimum amount of money in it before the fee is charged. So we're going to look at these two banks and their different checking accounts, or we're going to try to figure out which bank we would choose. So it says the table below shows information about the checking account. Um, checking accounts at each bank, we have bank A, which is the monthly fee is 1% of the account's balance. And then bank B's fee is just a flat $5 rate. So it says which bank would you choose if you had $700 and your bank account. So first, for bank A, I need to figure out what is 1% of 700. using a proportion to figure that out. So 1% is $7, and then bank B, my rate is $5 no matter what, so I would choose bank B. Because the monthly fee is cheaper. Credit reports. So what are on credit reports? What information? Your length of credit history. Your number of credit lines. So number of loans you have, number of credit cards you have. If you have any late payments, are you paying your credit cards, your loan payments on time, the amount of money you've spent of your limit. So on a credit card, for example, it could have a limit of $10,000 on one credit card. It'll let um, your credit report will say how much of that $10,000 you're spending in your employment history. Um, and why is it important to have a positive credit history? It can show lenders, people that are giving you money, that they can trust you to pay it back if you borrow money from them. The higher your credit score, the more likely you will get a lower interest rate. That means they can trust you to pay it back, so they are not going to give you a high interest rate. If they can't trust you to pay it back, they're going to give you a high interest rate because that means they can make a lot of money off of you. The table below shows part of a check register. Find the balance of the checking account after each transaction. Fill in the missing balances. So deposit means you're putting money into your account. Withdrawal means you're taking money out. So you're starting with $547.98. And then you're paying a utility bill that is $120.45. So now you have $427.53. Then you get paid and deposit your paycheck into your bank account. So now your new balance is $860.09. So nowadays, we have prob you probably have like a phone app that can tell you your checking account balance. 
years and years ago, they used to have a booklet that had this check register in it and you would keep track every time you bought something or deposited something in your account so you would know what your balance is so you don't overspend. All right, debit cards versus credit cards. They are a little bit different and it's important you understand the differences. Debit cards take money out of your account immediately. So it's important that you know the balance of your checking account if you're going to use a debit card. You usually need a PIN number. Once you swipe that card, you've got to put your PIN number in it. And then if you overspend what's in your checking account, then you could get some type of fee or penalty. Credit cards. Credit cards, you can spend the money now and pay it later. It means it can be dangerous. If you pay your credit card off late, usually you pay credit cards off once a month, you can get interest on late payments, so you will end up spending more than Originally, whatever you bought was because of late payments. You usually pay it off once a month. And then you have a limit, a credit limit. That's a limit of how much you can charge on that card. A positive thing about um, credit cards is that if you use them wisely, you don't go over the credit limit, you pay them off in time, you can get benefits. Some examples of benefits are like cash back, so money back, um, airline points where you can get free airline tickets, hotel points. That's just some examples of rewards, benefits you can get from using a credit card. Paying for college. There are different ways you can pay for college, different options. Savings is money you set aside for college, money you saved. Grants are money from the government you don't have to pay back. Scholarships are money awarded to you for some type of reason. It may be grades, sports. Student loans are money that you borrow from the government and you do have to pay back. And usually there's interest on top of it. And then work study is where you work for your university and it helps pay for tuition, books, maybe your place you're staying to live. So the only one that you do have to pay back is student loans. 
So for example, if I took out a $10,000 loans loan and I had 10% interest over the years, so each year I have that loan, I am owing $1,000. So that's paying even more money onto that college, which is already expensive to begin with. Thank you for watching.